first start by disengaging the mag. You can see all the powder that's all over it. See all the powder. When this happens, you definitely want to take it apart and clean it. So now I'm just going to start taking off the laser. I don't know if you guys can hear the background, but somebody's playing music and it's driving me nuts. So I'm just unscrewing the Viridian laser. Took it out. Now I gotta remove this screw. So the screw is coming out. Now I'm gonna take out the uh, compensator. We wanna remove this screw and we wanna remove this side and we wanna remove this one. All right, let me drop out the spring. All this gotta get clean because what it does is it, it absorbs the, the, the grease. So you wanna clean this very well because it's just not good to have it like this. But I'm just gonna take it apart and see if there's any issues going on with this. So, I'm going to unscrew this. You know what? Before I even take that apart, let me unscrew this because this is being held by these screws here. So, let me just loosen that up first. Okay. Okay, let me unscrew this one. Then I gotta unscrew this one. And then once this screw comes out, I should be able to just take it apart. So the two small screws are for the front and the large one is for the back. This is one this screw here is for this one, and these two two spots here is for this, and then this one is for down here. So I'm gonna take it apart. Look at all this powder. It's disgusting. Oh, so I wanna point out the reason why you can't make this into a left-handed uh, launcher. Because this piece right here, if I flip it, this whole entire part is gonna go that side. And there's no other spring mechanism on this side for me to put it. So let me show you. So I take it apart. So I just took this out. You can't put it as a left-hander because what happens is the uh, this mechanism right here ain't gonna touch the spring that's right here. So watch when I push this in, it's not gonna work. So you see, there's this metal piece right here, and and that needs this part to touch it, but you can't move that and put it on this side you could only leave it right where it's at so I don't know one of my viewers said that um, you could make it into a left-handed TCP but I don't know how they did that and as far as I'm concerned it's it's not designed that way so so let me just take it back out so I'm gonna be cleaning all this so I just wanted to show you All right, so here is the um, regulator. So I'm gonna take this off, and to do so, you just take out this rubber piece right here, and then you're gonna take out the the regulator. So you would remove that screw there to remove the regulator. So I have to do a major cleaning on this. And now I'm gonna take out the regulator. So it is filthy. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually wipe all this off and I'm going to grease it up. Okay. So I definitely want to check the bolt. I want to see if the uh, the O-ring is busted or not and re-lubricate the bolt and the O-rings because I was having an issue where I would pull the trigger and it seemed like it wanted to just release the, the CO2. And uh, I found that pretty strange. So... This is the bolt assembly. This is like a nightmare, it's a mess. Okay, so there is no uh, no damage as far as the, the firing pin goes. That is still there, it's not broken or nothing like that, which is a good sign because if that snaps, then I would have to buy a whole new bolt but uh, I have to check the o-ring so I'm, I'm gonna get a flashlight and take a look at it all right so now I'm gonna check the o-ring I want to make sure that it's not damaged it looks good it doesn't look broken so I don't know if you can see it on camera, but that's the O-ring. So I'm gonna actually clean the bolt and uh, grease it up and also the O-ring, put some uh, oil in there. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna use a baby wipe some people probably gonna be like, what are you doing using a baby wipe? But this helps me, so I'm gonna use the baby wipe because the powder is very dry. It absorbs the moisture. So I wanna make sure that I clean out all the powder and get that bolt nice and shiny. See, it's dirty. So. I find it easy to uh, replace this when you take this off and you put a sharpie in it and then you put the uh, o-ring in this way so I'm cleaning it out to make sure that I get all the uh, debris out of it because it's supposed to be a shiny bolt this is extremely light Getting out all the debris, dirt buildup, if there is. Okay, so that's clean there. And we're going to clean this now. So again, when you uh, break a inert projectile, this thing becomes a mess. And it's such a pain in the neck to clean it. So right now, I'm just cleaning it up so that way I can put everything back together and it ain't going to have no buildup of uh, powder and it could work as it's supposed to. So you want it to get all this baby powder out. Because it's supposed to create a seal. And you could probably hear the seal. You could kind of feel it too. So I'm going to clean it up a little bit more and make sure that we're good to go. So I'm going to move that to the side right there. And I'm going to, I'm also going to wipe it again with a dry cloth. But now I just want to make sure I wipe all this powder off. Now, people are probably going to say, oh, you don't do it that way or whatever, whatever. Well, this is the way I do it, so I don't care. So I'm going to take it out because I want the, the moisture from the wipe to absorb the uh, powder. 
because if you use a dry pot uh, a dry paper towel all you're doing is just rubbing it from left to right you're not actually absorbing it and picking it up so you want to take all that out so now I know I'm not gonna be able to get through everything but the most important thing is the regulator and the firing bolt if the if the bolt is filled with powder it's not gonna seal the uh, firing pin it's just gonna not lock it in so that way the CO2 won't come out you want to inspect the the seals right here they look good so let me just take a paper towel and start wiping it to dry it out Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but just do it as best as you can. Move it to the side. Let me wipe this off. Take off any moisture, because I will be uh, greasing it up. So this is going to take longer to clean. Look how, how much powder is in it. I don't know if you can see it. It's all filled. So again, a baby wipe to absorb the, uh, the baby powder. So these inert rounds that I think they call it talcum powder, but it's, it smells like baby powder. It's the same thing. And you want to get all this out. I might have to get some Q-tips to get in there and they're hard to reach places, but there's a lot of buildup right here. So there's a lot of buildup here. About halfway through cleaning, it ain't going to be perfect, but I'm going to do my best. But you want to take these two screws out so you can get in here and, and clean that up. So I can take those out. So the flat one goes to the back, the one with the round head goes to the front. This piece goes right in here. So this square, when you want to re retighten it, you would have to put the square inside this little slot right here, like that. So take it out. So let me finish cleaning this up, and then uh, we'll get back to uh, lubing it up and then reassembly. All right, so I'm going to start putting the uh, lower part together. So let me just put this in, in this little slot right here. This goes right in. So in here I'm gonna put this like this and then now I'm gonna put the screws in so the flat one goes to the back and then the round one goes in the front so let me just tighten it up let me put the uh, round one in So you don't want to over tighten it because then you might crack the uh, the plastic. So just just enough to just nudge it. So that's in. So this this piece here is what the safety uses. So it you, when you turn on the uh, safety or you turn it off, this is what makes the clicking noise because you got the ramp that. It slides on and off of so let me um, install this 
and uh All right, so we're going to put the uh, safety spring in. So it's like that. Now I'm going to install the safety. So I have to push down. So that's how the safety works. All right, so then I'm going to start with the bolt. Let me uh, grease it up. So put this on. You want to put this on before you put grease on it because what happens is when you slide this back, you're basically sliding all the grease off the bolt. So just slide it back first. Make sure it's flush. And I am using... Uh, die slick lube Grimberg uses this this is the reason why I bought it especially Kurt he knows this stuff so you just push them on the bolt and with this this lubrication it, it a little goes a long way so just glide it around get it on here nice Make sure it's well lubricated. Put a little bit, a little bit more. The problem with the baby powder, once it hits this, it starts absorbing it, and it could cause the uh, the CO two to come out when it doesn't reposition the pin. So I'm just putting a little grease, some operator grease on the O-ring. So, you know, some people have their own ways of doing this. This is my way of doing it. So to each his own. And then you just slide this on. There's a nice seal. And uh, now I'm gonna install it. So I'm gonna push it in. So th the one thing is don't push it all the way in. Just push it in just enough so that this cap, when you tighten it, it pushes it all the way enough in. So I'm going to slide the bolt forward. It's very important to do that. So that way it resets the regulator. And uh, let me install the regulator. So now when you put the regulator on, you have these pins here that will guide it. So you just put it on, line it up. See, it sits flush like that. And then you just put this arm right into the trigger. And then you put this little ring. It's a rubber little piece. You slide it over. So that way it holds it in place. So I'm also going to put a little bit of grease. On the moving parts so that way let me tighten the, the screw for it so you want to put the screw in tighten it up Make sure it's secure. But don't over tighten it. Okay. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to put this cap on until it's on the uh, lower half. So let me uh, put it on.
like that. Now it's on. Let me put the uh, front screws in. So don't tighten this yet. Just put it in just to, for it to sit in it. Because when you uh, go to tighten it, you want all the screws to be tightened equally. We're going to put this one in the back. one more so this one I'm gonna have to put the compensator on then I'm gonna drop the screw inside so now that you have the screws all in now you could begin to start tightening up tighten them up so that's tightened Now I'm going to tighten these equally. And then I'm going to tighten the, the back. Don't over tighten this because you could crack this area. And then now the final thing is putting the cap on. Make sure you tighten it. Then I'm gonna put the laser on. Put the screw in. I just got to tighten that screw there. Put the uh, spring in. Now you're going to hear the regulator clicking once I put the barrel in. Now pay attention to the sound. So watch, watch, watch you hear it click. So the click, the barrel pushed it back and it uh, made a clicking noise. That's what you want to hear. That's why they say always put the bolt forward. And uh, that's it. So I'm going to clean this magazine, right? And what you would normally do is you would put some, some oil here. Put a fresh CO2, put some oil in here, two drops, you would put it in, you would puncture the CO2 and fire off the CO2 so that way that oil goes inside and lubricates everything. So that would be the next step, but I'm not going to do that right now. So the reason why I did this video is because I'm going to show you these videos next. Um, why I did the, the, the maintenance on it. So when I would fire it, it would almost seem like a jam up and it wouldn't reset itself when I pull out the magazine. And there was so much powder inside that it did not want to work. So this is the reason why I took it apart to do that. And I figured I'd share this video for you, you know, with you guys. Um, so let's roll into that video and you'll see the issues that I was having, but it's very important to have uh, the TCP maintenance 
you know, even if you have a FSC, you always got to lubricate, keep them greased up and oiled up and ready to go. Because if not, you would run into issues. Now, I put a lot of mileage on my TCP and, you know, I do put oil into the CO2 cavity. And once it goes up, it lubricates inside, but you still have to do this, take it apart and clean it up and let's roll into the videos. Hey, what's going on guys? So I have the Grimberg uh, holster for the TCP and the FSC, and I am actually wearing the holster. I don't know if you can see it on video, but I could actually feel the TCP on me. And uh, it's right here, if you ain't notice. So here's the, uh, the Grimberg holster. It has nice retention. You can adjust it with these screws right here. And when you get it, it might be tight. All you gotta do is loosen up the screws just a little bit and play with it just to get the right fitting and you can pull it out. So I wanted to uh, point out that the thing with the FSC and the TCP is that people don't like the fact that you gotta puncture the CO2 first by twisting the bottom and then engaging the weapon, excuse me, launcher. So I just wanna show you guys the step that people are, are gonna have to face when they try to pull it out and use it. So let's do that now. So when you need to use it, obviously I'm, I, don't, I haven't done this a lot, but when you need to use it, there's a few steps. You gotta pull it out, twist it, take the safety off, and then you can use it. Now I'm a lefty, and someone said that you could take it apart and, and fix the safety to be the other way, to accommodate your left hand but I took it apart and I checked and I didn't see any any way of doing that now also if you're a righty and you have the holster on this side the thing with that is it's a little bit better for the righties because they don't have to worry about anything as far as just pulling out puncturing and then their finger could reach it to on um, uh, to take the safety off and then they could use it for all you lefties you basically have to do it like this with two hands pull it out puncture and then hit that now when you're about to be attacked or anything like that it's going to be very difficult people don't react or respond the same way the, the, their, their body functions differently when they're on the high stress so this would take time to getting used to and you would have to practice whether you're righty or lefty so basically i'm just going to show you in the steps that you would have to use this in a self self-defense scenario so So look, this is what exactly is going to have to be done. Since I'm a lefty, this is exactly what I got to do. So this little flap here, I don't, I don't like the fact that it's loose. So what I do is I push it down so that way it's not in my way. And when I go pull it out to twist it, I don't have to mess with the flap. I could just twist it. So let's do that now. Now this was a, a two-point demonstration. One being using the, the Kydex holster, and two, showing you that the uh, Lapco barrel is not good for VXR rounds. So I don't know if you noticed, but none of those rounds actually came out. They were just breaking. And I'm pretty sure they probably stuck inside in pieces. Yep. So you cannot use the Lapco barrel with VXR rounds. So I'm gonna change the barrel and then we're gonna do this all over again. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take out the, uh, the Lapco barrel because it's not gonna work with the VXR rounds. As you can see previously, it, it jammed up the round. That's why the breach on the uh, uh, pepper ball barrel is bigger. So let me take this out, let me just make sure. So the Lapco barrel does have a smaller breech, and when the VXR rounds are trying to get fed in, it's not going in and it'll get jammed. So that's the point with the Lapco barrel. The Lapco barrel is good for round ball, good for HP 68s. So if you want to use round ball, pepper ball, you're fine. If you want to use jewel rounds, you're fine. If you want to use HP 68s, this is the way to go. But if you solely are focused on using VXR rounds, you have to use 
the, the standard TCP barrel, it has a bigger breech. And the reason why is for the VXR rounds. So we're gonna demonstrate that again, and you'll see that the VXR, the VXR rounds will go out due to the bigger breech, no jamming. All right, go ahead. All right, so I have it loaded with VXR projectiles and the, uh, the TCP barrel. And we're gonna run the same scenario again. So remember, when, when you need to engage the CO2, do not leave the flap like this. I do not like this. I wish they came out with a better design, but the most important thing for me is that when I load it up and I have it ready to go, I push it this way so that way it stays this way, it doesn't come up. It's easier to put your thumb on this and twist it. So we're gonna run that scenario again. So I'm gonna holster it and we're gonna do it again. So in a situation where you have to engage it again, we're gonna try it again, all right? Got a jam up. What the fuck is wrong with this thing today? Hmm. That's strange, I got a jam up. Let me go get another CO2. Yeah. All right, so being that I'm a lefty, when I pull it out, I have to use this hand, puncture the CO2, same thing if you was a righty. And then I have to use my pointer to take the safety off. Whereas if you was a righty, you would pull it out, puncture the CO2, and then your finger's already close to the safety, you could just slide it over and use it. So this is gonna be the lefty side showing you. So when you need to engage it, you pull it out, puncture, take the safety off, and use it. So let's try that now. I'm getting jam ups using VXRs. I don't know. <laughs> 